Trigonomic identities Two functions, f and g, are said to be identically equal if f of g equals g of x for every value of x which both functions are defined. Such an equation is referred to as an identity. An equation that is not an identity is called a conditional equation. We're going to look through some trig identities, and if you don't have these written down or you can't find them in your book, I suggest you write them down right now. You might have to click pause first. We have the quotient identities, reciprocal identities, Pythagorean identities, and the even-odd identities. Now some of these we might have talked about before. Establishing an identity. Prove the left side of the equation is equal to the right side of the equation. Here are some guidelines for verifying identities. You always want to work one side at a time. It is better to work the more complicated side first. Look for opportunities to factor an expression, add fractions, square a binomial, or create a monomial denominator. Also, look for opportunities to use the fundamental identities. If the preceding guidelines do not help, try converting all terms to sines and cosines. And always try something. Even paths that leads to dead ends provide insights. Use algebraic techniques to simplify trigonometric expressions. So let's say I want to simplify the cotangent of theta divided by the cosecant of theta by rewriting each trigonometric function in terms of sine and cosine. Here's what I'm trying to simplify. Now at this point, I really can't think of anything, except I know that the cotangent is cosine over sine, and the cosecant is 1 over the sine. Well, when we divide fractions, remember we change those into a multiplication. You'll notice that when we changed it to a multiplication problem, we flipped the denominator. Instead of 1 over the sine of x, we have the sine of x over 1. Now hopefully you'll see something interesting here. The sine of x and the sine of x will cancel. So it turns out that the cotangent of theta over the cosecant of theta equals the cosine of x. Simplify by rewriting the expression over a common denominator. So we have the sine of theta in one of the denominators and the cosine of theta in the other. Basically what we're going to do is we want the sine, cosine in both of the denominators. Since I only have this sine in this first one, I'm going to multiply by the cosine over the cosine. Remember this is the same thing as multiplying by one. Since I only have the cosine here, I need to multiply by the sine. I'm going to multiply by the sine of theta over the sine of theta, because remember, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1. So then this is what we get. It's kind of a lot of stuff. What I did was I actually distributed the cosine of theta. So that's how I get the cosine of theta plus sine theta cosine theta. And here's our denominator. And then for this one, I also distributed the sine of theta into both of these, which gave me the cotangent of theta sine theta minus cosine theta sine theta over cosine theta sine theta. Now this is the same thing as this. As we continue, what I did was, I wasn't really sure about much, but I was sure that the cotangent was the cosine over the sine. And it also turns out that positive sine theta cosine theta minus cosine theta sine theta cancel. And here the sine and the sine also cancel which leaves me with the cosine of theta plus the cosine of theta over sine theta cosine theta. Well then that gives me two the cosine theta over sine theta cosine theta. But we're not done yet. The cosine will cancel, which leaves us with two over the sine of theta. Let's simplify by factoring. So we have the sine squared theta minus one over tangent theta sine theta minus tangent theta. Well, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but this is the difference of squares. So that will change into the sine of theta plus 1 times the sine of theta minus 1. And then down here, do you notice that there's a tangent of theta in both of these? So I took it out. Hopefully you saw that one. These two cancel, which leaves us with the sine theta plus 1 over the tangent of theta. Establishing an identity. Establish the identity. Basically what we want to do is we want to get the left side to look like the right side. I'm picking the left side because that's a little more complicated. I drew this line just to remind myself that I'm not going to touch the right side. Now when I start on the left, I really have no idea. So what I did is I just changed the cosecant into 1 over the sine and the tangent into the sine over the cosine. Did you see those two cancel? This leaves me with 1 over the cosine of theta. And guess what? 1 over the cosine of theta is the secant of theta. 
and I just establish the identity. Let's establish this identity. I put my line here so I keep on the left side. The Pythagorean identity says secant squared of theta minus 1 equals the tangent squared of theta. So that's what I did first. Now I really wasn't sure here, so I just substituted in things I know. Well, I know the tangent squared of theta is sine squared over cosine squared, and secant squared of theta is one of the cosine. I changed it from a division to a multiplication problem. Of course, these guys will cancel, leaving me with the sine squared of theta. I would like you to try this one yourself. Press pause, establish the identity, and then play to check your answer. So let's get started. Some of you might have gone to the right side. That's fine, but I think I'll stick with the left side for now. I wasn't really sure what to do, but I knew that the secant is 1 over the cosine, and the tangent is sine over cosine. So for this one, I do have a common denominator, and what happens is I would have 1 plus the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. This is what I would have, but it's really not getting me anywhere. But I know that if I multiply by 1 minus the sine of theta, remember this is 1, it would turn into this guy. Now you're probably wondering, why would you do that? Well, 1 minus the sine squared of theta turns out to be the cosine squared of theta. Down here, there's really nothing I can do, so I just leave it. At this point, there's something that I can cancel. At this point, I know I can cancel one of these and this guy. So it turns out we have the cosine over 1 minus the sine. And yes, I do notice that I was using theta instead of x. Sorry about that. But it still works. Thanks for watching.